The essentials of classic Italian cooking, the magnum opus of Marcella Hazan, the doyen of Italian cuisine. What's a doyen? I'm glad you asked, because I did too. Doyen means the most respected or prominent woman in a particular field. I'm Alex, and I am not the doyen of anything, uh, certainly not cooking, but with this book, I'm trying to learn. I'm not skilled in the kitchen, but I am enthusiastic. Today we're making frittata with pan-fried onions and potato. I've never made a frittata before, in fact I can't even remember when I last had one, but Marcella has... But Marcella has a whole chapter on them. Frittate, frittate? A frittata may be described as an open-faced Italian omelette, but the texture, appearance, and cooking procedure of a frittata are quite unlike those of other types of omelettes. Instead of being creamy or runny, it is firm and set, although never to the point of being stiff and dry. That's the challenge. It is not folded over into a thick, padded, tapered shape, but consists of a single thin layer, round like the bottom of the pan in which it was made. So essentially it sounds like an eggy, savoury pancake. This recipe actually requires you to first travel to the vegetables chapter and make a side dish called pan roasted diced potatoes. So today we're getting a two for one on this channel. The frittata recipe calls for 285 grams of potato. We're gonna double that so we can make the side dish as well. The answer is 570. Five hundred and sixty-nine. And that's only four potatoes. I get I mean, don't know why I expected more. Peel the potatoes. Now we dice them into one centimeter cubes. Um don't know what my technique is gonna be. Slice them maybe into sticks. It's actually about a centimeter. Looking cubish. It's gonna take forever. A couple of years back, my grandmother was cleaning out some old stuff and gave me this French fry cutter that, I mean, you can tell the age, but that'll get half the job done for me. Okay, here goes nothing. It, it's nearly through. Hey, look, it requires a bit of home engineering, but it, it's working. Now I just have to cut them up the other way. Cubes. I think I just realized what this piece was for. Now we wash them in two changes of water. And again. And pat dry with a tea towel. This feels like something where there's a skill that I'm, I'm missing. Maybe... Nope, nope. That'll have to do. Over a medium high heat, we add 12 millimeters of vegetable oil and I'm hoping I have enough. When you don't have enough, substitute with whatever oil's available. Christ, how much oil does she want? Well, 12 millimeters. Look, I'm gonna do 10 and that's gonna have to do. We're waiting for the oil to get hot enough that when you put in one cube, it starts to sizzle. It feels kind of dangerous. Oh yeah, okay, it's sizzling. So at this point, we turn the heat down to medium and put in the potatoes. Oof. The pan's supposed to accommodate the potatoes fairly loosely. I'm not sure if that's happening. I'm not sure how medium is medium. We're waiting for when the potatoes are tender enough to be pierced with a fork, but don't have a crust yet. Maybe they're getting there. Okay, that's, that's feeling soft. So we drain them out. So if we were prepping this as a side dish for a dinner party, this is where we'd take them off the heat. And then when we're about to serve up, we'd put them back in, but onto a very high heat. I don't know why I took these out. We need them now. Bloody oil everywhere. Really trying to not let these stick to the bottom. I feel like it was a little bold to call this pan roasted. This is, this is frying. Like there's no way around this. <laughs> this is frying. We're waiting for these to go a nut brown, and I guess bits of them are. The bottom of the pan is starting to burn a bit, and we need to keep using this, so I think that's where I'm gonna call it. Drain into some paper towel. 
Now this looks like a pretty fantastic. Now this looks like a pretty fantastic side dish. We could totally leave it there, but I have promised you a frittata. And when have I failed you before in my one video? Next, we need 115 grams of finely sliced onions. And this part's gonna make me cry. I'm not sure they're finely sliced, but that's, I think that's gonna have to do. I'm feeling them. Please let this be 115 grams. 83, 83. 130. I'm gonna leave a bit more in for the effort. These are going in the same oil as the potatoes. I tried to scrape as much burnt bits out. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but Marcella's the boss. And covered. And we're waiting for these to wilt and reduce in size. These have got that sweet caramel onion kind of smell. They've definitely reduced in size. Now we'll turn up the heat just a bit and we're looking for a rich golden brown. I know you can't tell in video land, but the onions have been going on for over half an hour now. I'm not sure if we'd call that golden brown, but they look pretty cooked. I think that's what we're going for. Fish them out. And we set aside to cool. Pour out the fat. According to the recipe, I'm supposed to just be able to wipe this clean, but it's kind of got some brown bits on it. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna give it a quick wash. We've got some eggs, award-winning eggs. I love that in the supermarket, they now actually label the caged eggs versus the free-range eggs, but some of the free-range eggs are like 10,000 hens a hectare. This one was 45 hens a hectare. If it's for Marcella, it's gotta be the best. And for the yeah, chickens. Oh, this one's got some poo on it. How you know they came from real hens? Five eggs. Whisk with a fork. Half the potatoes, because the other half's the side dish. Onions. I know I need to get better salt, just my proper salt grinder turns out was single use. Pepper. And mix it all up. Got to preheat the grill. Or if you're from America, the broiler. I have no subscribers. I have no business making fun of anyone. We've got a pan on a medium heat, 25 grams of butter, and we need this to melt, but not brown. Just as it gets to the foaming stage, we add our egg mix, stirring in the bowl as we put it in. So we've turned the heat down to very low. I don't know whether I'm just playing it a bit safe, but the eggs look like they've set except on the top. I need to be on the safe side. I'm gonna transfer it to the grill. We're waiting for the face to set, but we can't let it brown. Yeah, it looks pretty set. Now we loosen with a spatula. I'm scared of ripping it. It's sticking a little bit to the bottom, but I think we're gonna have most of it. And slide onto our plate. Haha! <laughs> yes! And that is a frittata with pan fried onions and potato. Felt like the potatoes needed a little parsley for color. Let's try this out. Ooh, you got the potatoes which are creamy and soft inside and somewhat dense, but then you've also got the lightness from the egg and it's not eggy. I was worried that it was gonna be eggy, but it's not quite like an omelet either. Mm. The sweetness of the caramelized onions is gorgeous. You could totally put a bit of parmesan in this rather than the salt, but this is just, this is gorgeous. It's not too heavy either. If you want to make a lunch that's impressive, but still seems kind of chill, make this. Mm. Even though they're fried potato, I get the name. It's like those nice Christmas potatoes that are crunchy on the outside, but really soft and fluffy on the inside, but you get lots of them. Seriously, this is fantastic. Marcello, you've, you've gotten me into frittatas. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time. Mm.